What's up, guys? Luis here from Fuel Tech, and today we will talking about electronic fuel injection on blowers, roots, and screw. Before we dive on how the EFI works on this kind of blower application, we will break this guy down and we'll try to explain to you guys exactly which part does what on this and how this thing works. And then we're gonna jump on how can we manipulate fuel better and properly. The first thing is the inlet, the hat. So the hat is the guy that diverge any kind of air coming from outside to our second piece, the blower itself. So this big chunk of metal, on, on this particular case, magnesium, right? Tries to grab the air from outside, squish it in through a different stages inside and push down. When it pushes down, it goes to our third main piece, the intake manifold. So the intake manifold, it is the way to match this big chunk of compressor to whatever engine you have. It can be a small block, big block, hemi, you name it. The intake is the one that's gonna do the, the thing. And after we go through those three main pieces, you have the fueling. So right now you have fuel rails and injectors, no different than any other different application, pro charger, turbo, you name it. It's exactly the same on the bottom. But on the top, you have a substantial difference you have what we call a blower injector manifold. So this manifold allows you to do a special type of fuel injectors connected to the manifold and to lines. Those lines will feed the fuel from the injector itself all the way to specific ports on the blower. Now that we took this thing apart, at least on some sections, I'm gonna start the other way. I'm gonna start from the bottom. So as we were talking before, this is the intake manifold. So as you can see, it's a really nice piece, billet machine. Sometimes you have something that's not, it can be cast, it can be different materials, you know, it doesn't matter, but what matters is what is the function. So as you can see, the manifold is the one that makes the transition from the blower to the engine. So you guys can imagine, this goes on the valley of a V8, right? So this guy here goes right on the middle, you have the blower on top, then, you come, you have this large opening, huge opening, because you don't want no restrictions. The blower is gonna blow whatever he can do here, right? You see the ports coming down, but what we, we're gonna talk about is this, fueling, right? You can see these two, you know, sticks, whatever you wanna call. These are the fuel rails. So you have fuel coming in, fuel coming out, you're gonna have fuel regulators and stuff like that. But most important, they will feed the injector. So you have one injector per cylinder. That's not different than a mechanical setup. The mechanical setup has one nozzle per cylinder, something like that. This is really useful to spread the fuel between the hat over the blower and the manifold under the blower, and you have a split between. But this side, it's able to do individual fueling. So if you need more fuel on the back, more fuel up front, it doesn't matter. Those injectors will allow you to do across RPM range, boost range, load range, you, you name it. These on top, they cannot do that. This fuel goes through the blower and it's kind of chilled up with the blower with air and is pushed in. Where? We don't know exactly. Across the boost and the RPM, they will go to different spots. They can be too much on the back. They can move a little to the middle. When you idling is different. So these injectors, you mainly don't use on idle. You may use to try to achieve a better temperature per cylinder, something like that. But like this, it's under power under boost, two step and above. These guys, you run at all times. So now that we see the manifold, let's talk about the last piece of it, burst panel. The burst panel is a safety measure. If you have a failure, rocker arm, tune up, something like that, it may pop the intake, but you don't want this big chunk of metal flying in the air. So this piece is supposed to break off easier. So this is just like a safety measure, 
Everything else is not much different than a regular intake. So we already spoke about this. We're gonna put it to the side. Let me bring the guns. This is a awkward way to see a screw blower, right? So we have the hat. This is actually facing forward in the car, but I want you guys to see this, the EFI injector manifold. So as you can see, it's, it's like a, a single fuel rail that feeds both sides. So it has an inlet and outlet, larger lines. Remember, this is feeding eight injectors. So the line are bigger than this guy here, both input and output. So you make sure that you have enough fuel for eight injectors to a single feed and a single output. And you have each line going to specific zones of the blower. As you can see here, you could use like what they call a spray bar, trying to spray fuel earlier away from the blower itself to try to cool off the charge. That's questionable. Sometimes it makes more power, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on tuning, the blower, overdrive, a lot of stuff, but it's possible to. So the injector pulses go through this line. So in this particular deal, all the way to this nozzle, there is no restriction. There's no jet, there's no nothing. It's just a line and then it's pretty much a fitting to adapt from this to 1.8 on this particular blower. So the injector pulses just like it was pulsing anywhere on a sequence, just like it was a, six, a, sec a sequence on the fuel rail. And then you go from there. So the fueling is fairly simple. Like the fueling is fairly simple. Now that we have this thing up, I, I wanna show you guys something because it's actually pretty cool. So you guys saw this hat up front, right? So look at this deal. So this is how and where the air in the fuel come out. So as you guys can see, you have the inlet on this area, the very tip, the very nose of the blower up. That's the thing that stays up, you know, looks mean. Air and fuel goes across the blower. So it's compressing in stages and all the way to the back, you guys see an output. So this output outputs both fuel coming from the manifold and the air that was squeezed in. And you guys can see properly from there, but right here, this is another burst panel. So trying to be extra safe, we already spoke about this burst panel, it has one on the blower. So you see two, one on the back, one in the front. And with this, you try to make like a safer mount where if something goes bad, it's not going to be that bad. Well, we just got this thing back to its, to its stock position. That's how it sits on the car. Nice detail. Can you guys see this? This is like a, uh, usually used as a shock travel sensor. On this particular blower, we are using this as the TPS. So instead of using sometimes those, those cheaper uh, sensors straight on the shaft, we're actually using the assembly where we used to have like a, a barrel valve for the mechanical injection. And we put a shock sensor and you can see this will measure the opening of the blades. It's a good sensor, it's reliable and it's really easy to, to install on a, on, a, on a blower like this one. Um, this detail, sometimes people don't talk about it, but it's also part of the safety, you know, so you have belts attached to the heads or to other parts of the motor. So if at some point these studs, they're aluminum, the studs are not steel. If the burst panel is not enough and it breaks the studs, the blower will try to pop up and this thing will catch it. So this doesn't fly, right? So safety measures. So we already showed how everything sits, the basic principles of how they work. And as you guys can see, a blower EFI ain't different from any other kind of EFI, nitrous, turbo, you name it, right? The difference is not many people do it, right? So as today, we know a lot of people that have done it years now. It's not something new but it's something that's catching up slowly. The main thing is the way that you fuel the engine with a mechanical injection setup, you run a fuel pump, single fuel pump, a lot of pressure, and she gains pressure as she revs up. And through that, she puts more fuel inside the motor. And what you do, you have features just like FuelTech has called the MFI controller, where you activate lean outs. Each lean out is a bypass of the pump going back to the fuel cell. When you activate a bypass, it's a controlled leak. When you do the control leak, instead of going inside the engine, it's going back to the fuel cell. So when you have lean outs, most of the time the lean outs act on both. Whatever comes to the manifold, whatever comes to the top of the blower, 
they will be acting upon at the same time. You may have a small split here and there, those lines, they will have jets, you're gonna have jets here, so you can actually do a different bias between here and here. But the thing is, it's gonna be pretty much RPM and time. And you can't change much if it goes more to the manifold, more to the blower, you, you can't do that down the track unless you start doing a lot of valves. Then you're gonna have more valves than this and it's gonna be complicated. And they still usually don't behave based on boost. So the mechanical injection is pretty straightforward. As soon as the motor is spinning, the pump is spinning and it is pumping fuel inside the motor. All the jets make a restriction and the lean outs make a, a leak down and you drop what you have. So the mechanical injection is really easy to start and get it going. It's so simple. You can more likely buy a setup from someone that give you like a baseline, what kind of jet you run, what kind of pump you run, pump loop to try to make the pump access smaller, why the lean outs, what is the timers, you can have like really easy. The problem is not that. The problem is you can do much down the track and you have a hard time to do individuals on the bottom, mostly on low RPM. And you kind of have like your hand tight on when you do a lean out, it's a step. You're flowing whatever gallons per minute, 10. And you turn a lean out on, it's gonna be half a gallon, a gallon, a tenth. But it's a step, because literally you just start leaking. It's just like you're putting a hose outside. Instead of being inside the motor, it's outside, right? EFI goes completely on a different approach. You have constant fuel pressure. The fuel pump will try to go up and flow and pressure as she revs up with the engine, but you're gonna have fuel regulators one for the rails, boost reference. As the motor makes more boost, the fuel pressure goes up. So the fuel pressure is differentially the same. About 90 PSI, that's pretty standard number. 90 PSI from low RPM to the rev limiter. On the manifold, it's also controlled by a regulator, but this time no boost reference because there's no boost on the hat. The air comes in, there's no boost. So this, it stays at 90 PSI no matter what. This guy here may see, you know, 130 pounds if the motor is making 40 pounds of boost. So 90 plus 40, 130. This one never sees boost, it stays. So single pump or uh, dual pump of the same shaft, let me say, with two regulators. So you keep a 90 here, you keep a 90 differential here. Now that we have the car back together, let's take a look at how everything is actually assembled on the fuel side of this screw blown deal. Everything comes from the fuel cell. So the fuel cell have a single feed to a pump, but look at the detail. The pump is a dual, is a single body with a dual output, a single inlet, two outputs. Here to my left, I have one of the outputs. It goes to a fuel filter, okay? And you also have the primer pump. So the primer pump feeds this line. This line goes under the engine all the way to the back to feed our manifold block here on the top. After it feeds the block, it comes back from the back on the same route, but now this time go forward into our first fuel regulator. So this first fuel regulator does not have any kind of boost reference. So the hat, remember what we spoke about, only runs at constant fuel pressure on this vehicle, 90 PSI fuel pressure. After that, it goes back to the fuel cell. So let's see how this side goes. So this is the other output from the pump. The other output does the same thing, goes through a fuel filter, then goes up to the fuel rail. After the fuel rail, it goes around the engine to the next fuel rail. It comes on this side, comes back down, and look at that, another fuel regulator. So they next to each other on the returns after the manifold and after the fuel rails. But there's a difference. This regulator also have a hose connected to it. This goes to the intake manifold below the blower. When the blower makes boost, the regulator raises the pressure, so the differential pressure is always 90. But the, uh, the, the actual fuel pressure actually goes up. So if we run 90 as a base, but this 
compressor makes 40 pounds, he adds 40 pounds on the top of the 90 and it would see about 100, 130 pounds of fuel pressure. But our differential is our fuel pressure less the boost and that's going to be 90. After the regulator goes back to the fuel cell. So if you think about it, this is pretty much the same thing as a regular EFI car, but besides the pump, everything is double. Double lines, double regulators, and one is boost reference, one is not, and this pump has to be like this. If the pump has a single output instead of two, both regulators will be fighting on the same line. They cannot do that. So this single body, but dual gear, is the way to go when you have a dual regulator setup. So that's the first major difference. The second difference is there is no constant flow. There is no jet flowing at all times. Everything here is pulsing. These injectors are pulsing. These injectors are pulsing, right? So when they are pulsing around, and you can actually flip the sequence if you want on the hat, but this one is firing pretty much on the same fire order of an engine. You can do more on the front, more on the back. You can start with more on the back. You can finish more up front. It's up to you. It's up to the tuner. Here, you can do a lot of individuals, a little bit more down low here, a little bit less, then you flip, then down the track when it gets a lot of rim air, makes more boost, I want more fuel up front. You can do that and everything is smooth, is smooth sailing. A big difference, this system, just like any other EFI, will be based on boost. So what happens if you do a lap on a worst weather? The EFI will take fuel on its own because it makes less boost. What if you make a lap during a cold night and pressure is high? you will make more boost, the EFI will compensate on its own. What happened if you lost a rocker arm on the intake? The blower will keep blowing inside, the boost is going to jump. We talk about over 20 pounds gain because you lost a cylinder. What the EFI is going to do? Add the fuel. You more likely won't even see that much difference when it goes down the track with more boost and one cylinder less. If you had a mechanical deal and you lose an intake rocker arm, pow! Blower pops. If it gets cold and you were not able to catch the difference and you didn't put that, the more fuel on this thing, pow, pops lean again. So the EFI not give you more tunability about not having the steps and having smooth transitions, but also are looking to different sensors that the mechanical cannot look. Another one really useful is the O2 sensor. So O2 sensors go on exhaust, they measure in real time what is the result of the combustion process. If it is too lean, you can allow the ECU to add fuel. The mechanical cannot do that. So you're going down the track, the base tune up's not right, the air is way better, and the ECU sees, man, O2 is a little lean from your target. The ECU can add five, 10%, and saves you the run. It still can haul ass, be really fast, and don't hurt the motor. The mechanical, you miss your fueling, pop in the blower. So that's why, now you guys can see, this is so important. Burst panels, straps, because on the mechanical life, it's really easy to not have something working right or missing the tune-up slightly and popping this blower off, right? So the EFI on a blower, doesn't matter if it's a root, doesn't matter if it's a screw, allows you to tune it better and also to have more safety features. It's not going to add a crazy amount of power is not going to make you magically quicker, but it is a tool for you to go faster and to be quicker at the same time that you can be safer on tuning better and properly for engine changes, weather changes, track changes, or even a random power management change where your engine RPM swing to a different position where now pump speed doesn't matter. After going the majority of the mechanics, the plumbing, the idea and the principles, I'm gonna use my amazing handwriting and drawing capabilities to try to explain to you guys how power curve and fuel curve can interact and how they do on EFI and mechanical injection. So I brought this quick example for you guys. So approximation number. So don't take in consideration they are not exactly precise, but they're good enough to illustrate what we're talking to say what we're trying to say here. So um, a blown hemi power curve, making around 3,000 horsepower at about 10,000 RPM 
that engine is going to be pretty thirsty. It's going to use around 12 gallons per minute. That's a number pretty popular for who use mechanical fuel injection. But that also translates to EFI numbers. So that number, if it was pounds an hour for you who uses injectors, is going to be about 4,400 uh, pounds an hour. And if you see down low, those engines like to idle at about 2,000 RPM. And they actually produce around 250 horses down low. So that put us at around one gallon an hour fuel consumption, something around that number, right? And you guys can see it's a nice curve, 2000 RPM on auto, about 250. As the driver, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you deck it. Most of those motors, they leave 5000 and above. And you can see they don't make much power down low. But after the 5,000 RPM range, they go whoop really quick and they kind of hang around that 10,000, making a lot of good, nice power that you can go fast. So let's see what would be fuel curve, ideal fuel curve that EFI is capable of providing. Hey, that's weird. Look at this graph. Is this right? I, is it just change colors? Well, actually, it is right. It is right, because horsepower, it's one-to-one -one related to fuel consumption. If we don't change the brake specific, if the motor doesn't change its efficiency much, the fuel consumption, it's one-to-one -to, -one to power. So the ideal fuel flow curve that only EFI is capable of providing to you guys, it is like this. Looks exactly the same as the horsepower. But now we're not seeing horsepower numbers, you guys see? Same RPM, 10,000, 2,000. But now, one gallon per minute, that's about 370, 390 pounds an hour alcohol. And 12 gallons per minute, all the way at 10,000, around 4,400 pounds of alcohol. So EFI, true precise management, true injectors like we see, is 100% capable of mimicking the power curve throughout the RPM, no matter what you're doing. If you are using that engine on a drag racing application or maybe on a monster truck, it doesn't matter. Whatever the motor is, boost related, whatever happens, the EFI will be able to be sweeping back and forth like crazy and keeping the motor happy where you want. Let's take a look if we had a mechanical injection. Okay, once again, we have our ideal power on this black dotted line, and that's also our power curve, our ideal fuel flow curve. But now, your fuel flow curve on a mechanical injection. What happens here is something pretty interesting. I'm going to kind of ignore below the, below the idle numbers. There is a lot of different manipulations you can do and stuff that happens. Sometimes the pump don't work on RPM. So like, we're not going to pay much attention to that, but we will from idle up. So usually a mechanical injection car don't have a fuel pump that can only provide what the motor wants. So as we spoke, 12 gallons at 10,000 make about 3,000 horses. And if we have that pump that makes 12 gallons there, that pump provides almost like a straight line from idle or zero RPM. Like it doesn't, doesn't come on that perfect number right now, but it's a straight line. It does not follow those small ups and downs that the motor naturally does because the intake, exhaust, camshaft and stuff like that. So the fuel pump used on a vehicle like that, it's always larger than the motor. So for example, I put a 20 gallon pump. So it's this guy right here, 20 gallon pump at 10,000 to be able to provide my fuel here. What happens? She's slightly lean early. As you can see, the pump provides less than ideal. Slightly lean is not a big problem. You lose a little power, the, the motor still runs. Problem is here, the pump overruns the engine and the pump starts providing more fuel than I want. So the motor becomes rich and rich and rich the higher I rev, the richer it gets. It gets further away from my perfect line. So what happens? If I don't have any kind of uh, external valve 
call as a lean out to assist me, I'm never going to make my 3,000. I'm going to overfill my motor. My motor might not even rev 10,000. It's going to start dropping holes, misfiring, skipping. So that's what people do in mechanical injection. They go, they leave the line with something, and then they activate a lean out. The lean out is nothing less than a control leak back to the fuel cell, making the pump behave as a smaller pump. So on this particular case, I would activate my first lean out around this zone. Boom. I activate my lean out. My pump leaks to the fuel cell. And now my pump behaves as a 15 gallon pump. And she keeps trucking uphill. Now it's a little lean. Once again, I need to make a decision. Either I shut off my lean out and makes it rich or I keep the lean out on and it's a little lean. So that's an option. I could also, also add more lean outs, but that gets complicated, right? So the average is four, some people use up to eight. So then after I do this, a little lean keeps it going, but he's overrunning my motor. I'm not even at eight grand here more likely, and he's already getting really rich. So my motor is not going to be making the power that I want is gonna to be too rich, you know, not efficient. So once again, I need to make a decision when to turn my lean out. If I turn right here, it's gonna to get too lean. I need to find a sweet spot where it's still rich, right? But not crazy lean. So it's kind of rich here. I'm gonna turn my lean out right here. Boom. Now my pump behaves like a 12 gallon. So my final fuel curve will be more like this. Comes from here, it drops to this zone, and then I finally get on this zone. As you can see, there are steps connected to my lean outs. And there is nothing I can do to make this perfect. I can make it better. I can increase my lean outs. I can put a lean out on the middle, another on the middle, and then I start adding lean outs. But those lean outs are pretty much RPM based. Most of them are not boost based. They are time based, RPM based. If the weather is better and the blower gets more efficient, you will try to make more boost. Most of the system don't compensate for that. So it's another hard stuff to do. EFI, once again, she compensates. More boost, more RPM, more fuel, less boost, less fuel. So as you guys can see, power curve, view curve, they all interact. And without EFI, it's pretty tough to get it right. So for roots and screw, you have pretty much two options injector-wise. You can use 520s for roots because they don't make much more than 3000 to the tire. They may go 33, 34, you know, outlaw trims. But if you go like a legal trim or something, they barely make 3000. Um, if you go screw, it's a different deal. They make more power. And the screw, you can overdrive that thing a lot to make a lot of power. So on the screw, I would recommend 720s across the board, all 16. Right. Um, as you can see, the 520 and the 720 are just like two guys from the line. So we have different tips. So you have different fitting style. So O-ring, O-ring is the same one that I have here. O-ring on the bottom, O-ring on top. The one that I have here on the hat, they actually uh, AN lines. But you also have uh, ORB lines if you want to do like so AN with O-rings. And you also have a tip 45 depends on the inlet and how it's spraying, you can use the tip 45 that sprays to the side. We don't talk much, it's not for this application, but this is pretty badass. This is the, the, the new kit on the block for FT injector, the high impedance injector. You're not going to see this being used on a screw blower, but it is pretty cool to use on your uh, gasoline, uh, E85 application, stuff like that, because this is high impedance, does not require drivers. All these, Big bad boys that you guys see that provides a lot of fuel that you can go and you they provide more fuel than this thing can make actually power. You can do seven, eight thousand horse of those injectors. They are low impedance. That means that you need a driver, right? So Fuel Tech has uh, what we call the Pro Driver, and each driver has eight channels. So you can drive one driver, intake, one driver, the hat. 
They will have like a lot of diagnostics to see if they are connected, if they are working, the setup correctly. You don't have any of that on a mechanical injection. And um, when you do a EFI, you gain some resources that you have with our system. So, for example, you have gear-based fuel. You have gear change base fuel. You have time base fuel. And now you also have time base per cylinder fuel. So if you want to, not just you can do individual fueling per RPM, per boost, but also per time. So those injections on the bottom, because remember, these go through the blower. Who cares? These go to specific cylinders. You can actually select a little bit more or less fuel on each one of them by RPM to across the RPM range, boost to the boost range, and also time, so how long you spend down the track. So this is really useful if you go a lot of boost like high overdrive or if you do quarter mile. Sometimes one cylinder gets pissed off down the track because it's too long in the run. So you can do fueling just on the cylinder, just on the cylinder, per time, but also per boost, but also per RPM. So a lot of tools, a lot of resources that you're only going to see with the EFI and you cannot, you simply cannot do unless you add so many solenoids and it's going to be looking like solenoid party there because it's going to be everywhere. You're going to be more than one for each one. That's not feasible. So moving to the EFI, you also don't need a bottle to crank. That's, that's kind of weird, but that's kind of cool. Do you see people using bottles to crank, you know, like a, a regular supercharger car or a turbo car? No. So why would you need on this thing? So when you have a mechanical injection, the pump's not pumping. There's no fuel. If you spin the motor over, there's no fuel pressure. That's why you need the bottle. This combination, we highly recommend you run a primer pump just like a turbo car. Before you crank, you turn your primer on, fuel pressure goes up, you spin the motor, this thing runs. Because it can just spray on the hat through the blower to crank it. Now use this on cranking. Just like we spoke about it, most of the time you're only going to use this to idle, this and this together down the track. And the last but not least, you can also change the ratio between blower fuel volume and manifold fuel volume any point of the run. It can be just on the two-step, it can be down the track, it's because weather conditions change, and you can make more fuel on the blower or more fuel on the manifold. It's up to you, it's up to what kind of blower combination you're running and how you want to deal with. As you guys can see, there's no crazy secret magic about this, but there's a lot of details. And if you have and use the right tools, this can provide a lot of power. So if you guys like this video and you guys want to know a little bit more about this or about something else, please drop a commentary, ask for something, and we can try to dig further on more knowledge. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the FuelTech channel if you want to know more about drag racing and high power stuff. See you next time.